Hey folks, welcome back. I am joined right now by Jeff Black and Josh Black from Little J Games, and they're going to tell us all about the game that they've developed called Dragon Hatchlings. So uh, Jeff and Josh, thanks so much for joining me. Well, thanks very much for having us. Uh, we love being here. Uh, Boston Fig is always one of our favorite events of the year, of any year, um, including this odd year. So it's very nice to be uh, here with you. Um, yeah, tell us about Dragon Hatchlings. All right, do you want to uh, start us off since it's your design or? Sure, um, so in Dragon Hatchlings, you play as a nice dragon trying to help hatch your family's eggs. Um, you do that by drawing cards from a pool, pool of cards that are placed on a table. Um, and <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no josh josh has, has got it exactly right so yeah you're playing the role of like saying this benevolent kindly old dragon and you're very concerned about the future of your dragon family so um you know in the springtime or whatever dragon hatching season is you know there's lots of dragon eggs out there so it's a kid's game so you're not trying to hurt your opponent's eggs at all but you're just trying to make sure that the most um of your eggs can survive um, so like Josh said, you lay the cards out and sort of spread them about face down on the table, um, depending on the number of players, uh, the card count changes, um, it can be as many as 80. Um, <clears throat> and on your turn, well, let me backtrack just a tiny step. So there's five different dragon families. It's five, right? Yep, five. And uh, each of the families has a unique power, which you can utilize up to three times during the game. And I'll get into that a little bit more uh, later on. Um, but what you're going to be doing on your turn is you're going to draw a uh, card out of the pool on the table. And it might be an action card, which I will describe, mm -hmm. or a card with a dragon egg on it. Um, and each of the dragon egg cards is specific to a certain dragon family, a certain color of dragon. So during, the, during play, you draw one card off the table. If it's one of your opponent's cards, right? Then you show it to everybody else who's playing, put it back face down, and then shuffle the cards around. So, and trying to make it as hard as possible for your opponent to get it. You're right, to keep it hidden, even though, yeah. but you're showing that it's out there. Um, if it's one of your eggs, if it's a special yeah. ability, or if it's a non playing dragon uh, color. So, during each game, there will be one. Uh, color of dragon egg out there that doesn't isn't actually represented by a player and that's just to keep everyone guessing uh, when you're taking a card into your hand is this one of this player's cards is it a non playing card is it an action card you're never quite sure. Um, and that leads to a nice element of surprise at the end of the game. Um, during the course of play you're, you're going to keep the eggs um, of your family's color, the first person to get a group of five of their own dragon family's eggs. Josh will show you an example. Such as like getting these five. So th that triggers the end of the game. We'd play through to the end of the round so that each player has had an equal number of turns. And then you take stock of the eggs that of your uh, color that you've been able to gather. So it's not necessarily the player who got the five eggs first that will win. It's actually the player who has collected the most valuable grouping of eggs. So. Here I have a tan one, a red one, and a blue one. Um, mm -hmm. The tan ones are worth the least, the red ones are worth the most. I won't go into the exact scoring. Um, and that's that's about it. Um, in a nutshell, that's how Dragon Hatchlings works. Um, it's for two to four players, ages seven and up, plays in about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on player count. That is amazing. I love that this is a collaborative, well, not that it's collaborative, but that it's competitive aspects aren't going to be head to head. Um, how, how'd you come up with the idea for the game? Um, well, I at the time had been uh, reading um, a series of books called Wing, Wings of Fire. Um, and it's just a bunch of novels um, uh, that are about dragons trying to fulfill prophecy. It's really good. But um, mm -hmm. I, um, at the same time, I've been making games for a little while. So I, I got the idea to um, make a game about it. And originally, was it for the uh, board game geek children's game contest? Yeah, that's where that's where it was first ever seen. That is awesome. Yeah. How long have you been designing games? Um, for three years now. I think. I'd say a little bit longer than that. Yeah, um, I I was inspired in around 2013 or 14 by a, a great 
kind of old uh, board game show, classic show called Board Games with Scott uh, by Scott Nicholson. And uh, I completely opened my eyes. I didn't realize what board games could do. You know, I was still in the Monopoly, Parcheesi uh, life uh, uh, situation. Um, and so I, was, I got very inspired by that. So I started making games myself right around that time. When this fellow was in- uh, uh, End of kindergarten, beginning of first grade. He had about a million Hot Wheels cars and they were just sitting around. And we didn't know what to do with them. So finally I said, you know what? We're gonna make a game. So we made this cool little racing game. We drew out the whole board, never even play tested it until it was in its complete final form. And uh, sure enough, uh, it works like a charm. We still play it from time to time. Um, and it's a great use because it, it doesn't come with its own cars. You have to use your own die cast uh, metal racing cars. Yeah. So <laughs> that is amazing. That is so cool. I love the idea that also that you took, the, you know, something that you just had laying around the house and turned it into a game and turned it into also an experience that you created this together. Yeah, it was really fun to make. Um... That was the first game I ever made with my dad. So um, that it was really fun to do. And like, I don't know, like that was, it was just cool to do and like, and fun to play. <laughs> yeah, no, well said. And uh, yeah, and it's it's led to um, an amazing, uh, an amazing amount of fun that we've had both making games, playing games, um, going to conventions, meeting people and all that kind of stuff, yeah. so. That's incredible. That's amazing. So do you work with anyone else on these games or is it just the two of you? Mostly it's just mostly it's just the two of us. My wife Tracy um, does help. She's she's an incredibly valuable play tester and she always gives great feedback. Uh, she's a, a former teacher, so she's great at reading rule books and uh, helping us, you know, make things a little easier. Yeah, yeah. Having good play testers is super important. Absol yeah. Absolutely. So she's definitely the uh, the, the very, very important third part of our team. Um, she comes to all of the conventions with us. Uh, she's a fixture at our table. So um, if you're ever, once we're live again, which we will be someday, uh, you know, I'd be happy to uh, see the three of us, you know, stop by when you see the three of us there. So. That's amazing. So little J, I mean, both of your names start with J. So I'm assuming that little J is, is Josh? Yes, that's me. <laughs> that's awesome. J. Yeah, the, 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 the legend. <laughs> <laughs> so what is next for you? What's next for Dragon Hatchlings? Do you want to go or do you want to Like, I don't know. Like, I think that if we ever want to do, we could definitely publish this game. Um, like, we just, like, we have tons of games um, that we could publish. And, like, we, and, like, it's just, I feel like if we can really tweak the game enough, like, um, the then it's a good chance. I agree with Josh that, you know, the disadvantage this game has been put into is sort of what we're all going through. Um, we were going to show it at Boston Fig and several other uh, smaller conventions in the area also. So, you know, it's missed out on nine months of valuable you know, feedback and play testing and, and all that. So it's, it's a little bit behind where we would have liked to have seen it. Um, ultimately, I do think it'd be a good fit for a publisher, someone who makes, um, you know, like game right type weight games uh that kind of thing yeah that makes sense so next steps are getting all the the final assets that you need to kind of like get it to a, a publication state basically yeah right now it's still in a fairly rough prototype form uh we've got print and play files it's also available on tabletopia um so it's 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 out there but you know, very, very limited exposure. And to that end, it hasn't been play tested anywhere near as much as it, it should have been. It's been tested by the three of us, but, yeah, uh, but not a lot of other folks right now. So yeah. Yeah. well, hopefully during the fest, people can come by and, and do some play tests with you and give you some feedback. Yeah, yeah, no, that would be fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah look, looking forward to that chance, absolutely. What's, uh, what else are you working? Are you working on any other games right now? Has yeah. quarantine yeah. fired more? <laughs> it sounds like like making games is just something that just happens all the time in your house. <laughs> yeah, month. The average is like two a month. Wow. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, uh, we do. And now, not to say that they're all show worthy but, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we we made it a goal. We made a New Year's resolution two years ago to design at least one game a month and get it to the table. Good game, bad game. 
you know, game that is based heavily on uh, an IP that we can never use, you know, it doesn't matter, just as long as we get something on the table. Um, in the meantime, between making all these games, we're, one of us is always being inspired by some crazy thing we see. Yeah. So we're kind of like serial board game designers. We just like, we just do this thing. And yeah. <laughs> But the, the latest game that I've been working on is called um, Steam Ravine. Um, it's an entry in this year's Board Game Geek uh, Children's Game Contest. I'm really keen on this game. I like it a lot. It's gotten some really good feedback really quickly, um, including some very, very generous uh, fans or board game designers. I don't know. I don't know exactly. People that I don't even know that went out of their way to make uh, art and stuff for the game. So yes. That's a yeah, from Italy. yeah, I forget his name. One but... guy from Italy and then somebody from the, the Midwest here. In, yeah, there, both so. of the art things, they just look so cool. I've also entered um, one of my games into this um, for the second, uh, into the board game, uh, what's it called? Board geek, game. Board game geek um, <laughs> uh, contest. It's called Call to Battle. Um, and I like that game too, just like he's, he's gotten more art submissions. <laughs> well, so last year, um, Josh and I competed in the Board Game Geek contest. He won with Dragon Hatchlings. I won eight categories out of like 12. Yeah, he, 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 yeah, yeah, he really did fantastic. So I told him that this year I have to have my revenge. So uh, we, <laughs> we both have games in and Josh's is a great game too. And, and I, I, I would have plugged it even if you hadn't. But uh, yeah, we're really excited. And uh, it, it's fun, kind of like you hit upon earlier. It's something that we can do together we started when he was in, you know, first grade, he's a sixth grader now. Um, and it's just a way we've been able to explore fun new topics and ideas and get crazy and guaranteed once a month we're spending, you know, an afternoon yeah. together making a game. So at the time we'll just be watching TV and we get an idea for like, oh, there's a game in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just love that. That's so incredible. And it's, it's just, it just makes me like so happy to hear about how this works with your family and um, oh, it's a really inspiring story. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, well, thanks for the chance. You know, it's, it's really is fun. And, and uh, yeah, I couldn't, I, can brag about in school. I, I was going to say, it makes for great show and tell stories. He went to show and tell with a game that he had made himself and uh, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So you're already that. an award-winning game designer. <laughs> <That's right>. yeah. <laughs> um, I've actually brought this game uh, last year in fifth grade. Um, I've, brought this game to a bunch of my friends and they uh, all loved the game so like it's definitely not just people I don't know my friends all love it too. And, and you know fifth graders are going to give you honest feedback so yeah for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> Even, yeah just like everybody showed it to liked it like from like my closest friends to kids that I barely know that's amazing so what advice would you have for someone who if, if someone's trying to get started designing board games and and doing what you do how, how would you tell them to get started? What advice would you have for them? Well, like, go for it. Like, if, like, it started with just, like, a comment in the car for me and my dad. Um, just, like, go for it. Like, and, like, our, like, just play other games, too. Mm -hmm. Like, play games that you didn't make. Like, play tons of, like, we have tons of games over there that we play. And like we run like ideas for our games from other games. So. I I agree. I would have said the exact. We didn't. I didn't coach him on any of that. So and I would have said about the exact same thing. Just go for it. Don't be afraid to. One of my favorite lessons that I read somewhere along the line was, uh, you know, Paul McCartney of the Beatles was asked, "How did you and John manage to write so many good songs?" And he said, "Well, we wrote about four hundred bad ones first. And I, I've always loved that advice. And to me, I'm not afraid to make 400 bad games if I'm, you know, some of them will be good. <laughs> so, so that yeah, go for it, don't be afraid. Advice. So, yeah, yeah, and it's worked for us. We've made, I'd say about 120 games or so. Again, they're not all show worthy, mm -hmm. but maybe one in eight or one in 10 of them are. And even at that, we've got 10, 12, 15 games that are contenders, I would say. So. Yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, so uh, now is the, just like space for plugs. So um, where can everybody find out more about Little J Games and uh, Dragon Hatchlings and what you're working on? Uh, cool, yeah. Um, I'm easiest to reach. I'm, I'm on Twitter a lot, um, JB Feast, um, JB F-E-A-S-T on Twitter. So if anyone wants to get in touch, that's usually the easiest place to do it. 
Um, we do have a website, Little J Games at WordPress. Um, it's a small site, but especially as my partner here gets more and more computer skills, we hope to add uh, some good content to that. Um, other than that, on the Board Game Geek, I'm there as Jay Feast, or you can search Jeff Black. And actually, Josh has his own designer page on Board Game Geek, too. Um, and we have print and plays of several of our games, including uh, Dragon Hatchlings and some older ones, too. Um, we have a, uh, what is that other one called? Um, <laughs> not Facebook. Uh, well, Dragon Hatchlings is on Tabletop Simulator. Um, oh, Tabletopia. Oh, I'm sorry, Tabletopia. I always mix up those two. It's on Tabletopia. Um, and I guess that's about it. Um, oh, itch, itch.io or it. Uh, we have a presence there. We've got three um, print and play games there, including one called uh, Moonlight Hippos and the Dreaded Croc, which is a co-op game where you are trying to prevent your hippos from getting uh, nasty sunburns, so they have to hurry back to their watering hole before the sun comes up, but the mean old croc is in the watering hole and trying to mess with them the whole time, so. As it sounds, it's for like kids, little kids, littler than me. So, but we've had a lot of success with that. It's got, you know, quite a few downloads and some really positive feedback, so that that's one I would recommend checking out if you're interested, so. Amazing. Well, Jeff and Josh, thank you so much for joining me. It was so much fun to talk to you both. And I cannot wait to see, uh, I can't wait to play Dragon Hatchlings and to see more of what you design. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And we can't wait to have you at our table someday in person. And uh, I know that day is coming. So it'll be a, a big old happy moment when it when it does. So excellent. Thanks again. Thank you. And, and uh, you know, have a great day. Yeah.